At this point, we've talked about friction forces in fairly vague terms, and it's time to get into the understanding of friction in more detail. We know that when we push on a box that is sitting on concrete, it's pretty hard to move. We can push on it and the friction force pushes back. If we push with a force of 100 newtons to the right and it doesn't move, we know that the friction force is also pushing at 100 newtons but to the left. If the friction force is less than 100 newtons, then the box would start to move to the right, as we'd have a net force to the right. If the friction force was more than 100, then the box would start moving to the left. Well, it would, as we'd have a net force to the left. Since the box is sitting completely still, the friction force must be exactly 100 newtons to the left. If we push harder, let's say 120 newtons, using the same rationale, if the box continues to just sit there, then the friction force must be exactly 120 newtons to the left. If the box is in equilibrium, then we know that the friction force equals the force applied in the opposite direction. It always opposes the motion of that box. So what could possibly change the friction force of our box? Well, if we took some of the items out of the box to make it lighter, that would definitely help. Basically, we're changing the normal force between the box and the floor. So we know that friction force must depend on the normal force. Also, if we had the box on a slipperier surface, like ice, that would also change the friction force. So, we can calculate friction force as FF for friction force equals mu Fn. The Fn is the normal force between the objects, the box and the floor in this case, in newtons. And mu is the coefficient of friction and is a number that represents the slipperiness between the surfaces. Mu between wood and concrete is around 0.60. So the force of friction can be as much as 60% of the normal force before our box starts to move. Mu between wood and ice is around 0 0.10. So the force of friction can be as much as 10% of the normal force before the box starts to move. I need to point out that mu comes in two forms, static and kinetic. Mu s, the coefficient of static friction, is used when the object hasn't started moving yet. It's static. U k, the coefficient of kinetic friction, is used when the object is moving. It's kinetic. Have you ever noticed that getting an object starting to move is harder than keeping it moving? It's true. You have to push harder on the box to overcome the static friction than to keep it moving while you're just overcoming the kinetic friction. The normal force hasn't changed, so it must be that the coefficient is changing. Mu s, or the static coefficient, is always bigger than mu k, the kinetic coefficient. Let's do an example. A 50 kilogram box is sitting on a concrete floor. Mu s is 0.60, mu k is 0 0.52. What is the force required to get the box to move? And what would be the force required to keep the box moving at 2.5 meters per second? So first step, a free body diagram. Again, it's a dynamics problem. It's so important to make a really good free body diagram. We have gravity, we have our normal force, our applied force, we'll say pushing to the right, and we know there's a force of friction opposing the motion. So it's pointing to the left. Next step, F net equals MA. We'll do it in the vertical direction. We have F net equals FN minus FG. On the left, we're considering up to be positive, and on the right side, we know that the box isn't jumping or sinking or anything like that in the vertical direction, so A equals zero. And this leads us to see that Fn, or our normal force, is equal to our gravitational force.
and our gravitational force is mg. We know how to calculate it near the surface of the Earth. Let's move to the horizontal direction. Again, F net equals MA. On the left, we have FA to the right and the force of friction FF to the left opposing the motion. And for the right side, we're looking for that exact point when the acceleration is just passing zero. That is, when the FA is just getting to the maximum friction force. This is the point when the box is just ready to budge. So, we can rearrange FA equals FF. And now we know how to get the maximum friction force. We can replace our FF with our new equation for friction, mu Fn. In this case, the box is still stationary. We'll use mu S, the static coefficient of friction. Also, we showed that Fn equals Fg in our vertical equation, so we can replace the Fn with mg. And we're ready to plug in some numbers. And solve. And the force to get the box moving would be 294 newtons. Or, rounded to two sig figs, 290 newtons. For the second part of the question, we need to determine how much force is required to keep the box moving at 2.5 meters per second. First of all, we have to ask, is there anything different in our free body diagram? Well, have the boxes changed weight? Nope. Has the normal force changed? Nope. We can see the weight hasn't changed, and therefore the normal force won't change. Has the friction force changed? It's still pushing to the left. The magnitude might be different, but the basic free body diagram still holds. And the same for the applied force. It's still pushing to the right. So our general free body diagram still holds. The magnitude of the FF and FA, they may change, but our equations will lay out the same. So let's go to our horizontal situation. F net equals MA. Now, in this case, what's the acceleration? Well, we're asked to keep the box moving at 2.5 meters per second. That is, this is a constant velocity, or A equals zero. It wouldn't have mattered if we had said, keep it going at 250 meters per second, or 2,500 meters per second. As long as it's staying at a constant velocity, it's not accelerating. So A equals zero. So again, FA equals FF, but when we're replacing the FF with our mu FN, this time we need mu K, because this time the box is moving, 2.5 meters per second, moving along at a constant speed. And we're ready to plug in some numbers and solve. And the force to keep the box moving would be 254.8 newtons, or rounded to two sig figs, 250 newtons. We can definitely see that it takes less force to keep the box moving than it did to start it moving, as expected. In this tutorial, we took a closer look at friction force. We can calculate friction force using our new formula, FF equals mu Fn. The normal force is the force between the surfaces, often just the weight of the object, but not always. Mu is the coefficient of friction, or the slipperiness of the surfaces. The coefficient of friction comes in two forms, static if the object isn't moving yet, and kinetic if the object is moving. To solve problems involving friction forces, do the same things that you did with any of the dynamics problems. That is, start with a really good free body diagram, and then move to F net equals MA. The only difference here is that when you get to inserting your FF, you have an equation, so you can calculate it. 